Welcome to Instrumental Analysis. In this mini lecture, we'll be doing some examples on significant figures. I'd also definitely recommend the website shown below. It's from one of my colleagues here at Rice, and they have a really nice discussion of all of the things we'll be talking about, both in this lecture and the next few. Okay, so let's just get some dense rules out there. Remember that significant figures, if you haven't done the measurement yourself, are going to come from known instrument tolerances. You never report digits past the instrument tolerance provided by the manufacturer. And that's a really important thing to know. And that you are allowed, if you have been in a lab and you've done the measurement yourself, let's say only once, to increase the instrument tolerances to perhaps better reflect physical limitations that you might have. For example, if you're colorblind, you might not be able to use an instrument or see an endpoint in a titration quite as well as somebody else. You will never decrease the instrument tolerance, though. You'll only increase it. So the manufacturer's instrument tolerance is kind of like a best case. And that really defines how many significant figures you should be carrying around in your measurements. But a lot of times, you haven't decided what that tolerance is. And instead, you're manipulating information that's provided to you with a certain number of significant figures. And so you need to know some of the basic rules for multiplication and division. In multiplication and division, you go to the example or the component that has the smallest number of digits and you make sure your answer is reported like that. And in addition and subtraction you actually have to look at the decimal place itself and where it is and make sure you never report or give information beyond where the least precise value is. Those are hard rules to describe verbally. So I encourage you again to go read that website and now we'll just do a couple of examples. So in these examples you might want to pause the tape and just try to do them yourselves. Um, Report your answers. Try to do your rounding at the last moment. And one of the things I'll point out in rounding is if you're exactly in the middle and you have to choose, for example, it's something, 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 five, and you don't know whether to round up or round down, round to the nearest even digit, where zero is an even. So I encourage you to go ahead and do it yourself if you want to watch me do it. Okay, so this first example is just a bunch of rounding examples. So to four significant figures, that means one, two, one, two, three, four. So I need to get rid of the 7, so that's just 1.237. I need to go to three sig figs here, which is that place. Okay, that's just going to be 0.135. Here I need to go to two sig figs. Now this is interesting because 51 is bigger than 50, so that's going to push me to 2.1. But in this case, I need to go to three sig figs or this position, and I have exactly 50 here. So it's unclear whether I round up or round down. Well, I'm going to round to the nearest even digit, which in this case is 2.00. And let's look at this example to three significant figures. So I need to round to this one. Here's an example where I'm going to round up, because if I round up, I get to a 2, which is even. If I round down, I don't. So here I'm going to round up to 3.02. Okay. Now, let's do these examples. Um, remember, when you're doing addition and subtraction, so 1.021 plus 2.69, well, this is an unknown. So what you're going to do is just write it this way. And this is, in fact, the correct number of significant figures. The same with 12.3 minus 1.63. You don't really know this, so your best bet is to go ahead and just subtract directly. And what you're going to get is 10.7. In this example, when you do multiplication and division, you know that you have to have only two significant figures left at the end of the day. And so when you do this multiplication, you're going to get 39.928. But you need to round to only two significant figures. So that's going to be 40. But you're going to write it with a little decimal place there so you let the readers know that that zero is significant. And in this last case, you're just going to multiply it out. You're going to have three sig figs, and you're going to get 2.85 times 10 to the minus 6. Let's do a few more examples. This is a really common one, because when you look up atomic weights, you're going to find that some atomic weights are much better defined than others. And this is a great case where, when you're trying to find the net molecular weight, just worry about the krypton. So krypton is 83.90. Fluorine you really only need to know to this decimal place. So if you take all of this, that's going to round up to the next one. That's going to round up. This is going to just be 19.00 times 2. And when you multiply that out, you're going to get 121.9 grams per mole. And that's, in fact, the right way to convey it. 
Now in this next example, this is a really good example because it's actually wrong. You would never, ever, ever report that many sig figs in a percentage number because that is actually over predicting. When you predict and you give uncertainty in a plus minus, you want at most one or two significant figures because when you're using the convention of plus minus, we're going to talk a lot more about this in future lectures, that's actually telling the reader way better than any significant figure ever could exactly what your uncertainty is. So how you would want to do this measurement, for example, is or how you would like to report it is if you have 3.12356 and it's this kind of error, well if you multiply this times point zero zero one six seven eight nine what you find is the error ends up being 0 0.00524. And that means that this number is overreported because if your error is to the third decimal place here, you have no business telling me what these two decimal places are. So the right way to do this is to say 3.124, again rounding, plus or minus 0 0.005. That's a way better way of doing it. Now, you could maybe carry the two. That's kind of up to you. And that's one of the limitations of using significant figures as a way of conveying error, because there's actually some wiggle room for how you do it. But like I said, never report your error past one or two sig figs. So this or this is an acceptable way of writing what's called the absolute error. Now, if you go to the next case and you want to go back, Really, this is the right way to have reported it. I would probably have just done this. Notice I rounded the percentage up because I only wanted these two digits, but 789 would lead it to the top.